Avant d'aller à l'école, j'ai remarqué que j'avais une bosse ici dans le cou. Quand je suis revenue de l'école, ça avait grossi encore plus. Donc je l'ai montré à mon père. Puis on est allé à l'hôpital. Puis euh, donc ils ont fait une biopsie, euh, ils ont fait des scans. Puis c'était pas juste ici, finalement, il y en avait euh, partout autour de ma voie respiratoire. Donc euh, c'est Hodgkin's lymphoma. Donc euh, c'est le cancer des ganglions. Euh, stade 2. C'était euh, l'été de mes 18 ans. Um, okay, this is your... Sorry, your I got diagnosed about a year and like six months ago with um, bone cancer of the rib. So Ewing sarcoma. Um, it, it was stage 4 because it spread to my lung. So I ended up getting chemo, having a surgery to remove three ribs and 20% of a lung. And then I went back on chemo and then I got radiation after for two weeks. I've been off chemo for about seven months, so here I am. You know, the name of the foundation is called the Tip of the Toll Foundation. What's the sense of the Tip of the Toll Foundation? Mm -hmm. Some people have some idea? Go ahead. Because uh, of the adventures you always go on, it's always like keeping you on like, the tips of your toes. All right. That's a good one. That's a good one. Being able to look past your, your problems and all the struggle you've been through and look like further. Stand taller, just like... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. To so stand up and you took the toes, and that's how you become an adventurer. That's how you become an explorator. You try to see farther in life. It's like also what you mentioned. Try to see farther above clouds. It's always sunny. Try to see if it's the sun somewhere. Try to see beyond our cancer. The second reason for me, it's to be gentle with nature, to be careful how we walk, where we walk, to be careful with the flowers, with the environment and the thing, to be sensitive, but also to be careful with the people we are with, to pay attention to each other. En fait, nos expéditions se font partout au Canada, donc il y a toute une, une, toutes des obligations logistiques là, de montage d'expédition. Puis ensuite de ça, bien, les jeunes, c'est certains qui ont certaines craintes. Ce n'est pas tous des jeunes qui ont déjà fait du plein air. En fait, la plupart en font pas forcément dans leur quotidien, donc c'est de les mettre en confiance puis de les amener à, à vouloir s'engager dans cette, dans cette aventure-là. Il y en a qui viennent de terminer leur traitement, il y en a que ça fait trois ou quatre ans qu'ils sont en dehors des médical qui vont relativement bien, mais qui peuvent encore vivre avec certaines séquelles psychologiques de, de la maladie puis des traitements qui ont dû subir. I thought it'd be really fun. I mean, dog sledding. Who wouldn't want to go? I've been camping before, just not in the winter, so I'm scared I'm going to get cold. Um, I find with like myself, probably with others, they get kind of babied a lot from their parents because they see them as, well, they've seen them at this fragile state and they're just worried. So to like send them on an airplane, you know, you got to catch this flight, they walk off and do that, got to be here to meet these people, pack this stuff. It really helps instill that uh, self-supportness, you know, that ability to help yourself again. Souvent, ils ont été, à juste titre, hyper protégés par leur entourage parce qu'ils ont eu peur de les perdre. Puis tout d'un coup, ça devient, ça devient un peu inquiétant pour tout le monde. Fait que là, je pense que les expéditions permettent ça. C'est-à-dire d'être le premier pas ou la première brique vers la reconstruction d'un soi normal ou d'un soi post-maladie. Put your feet together, your heels, without kind of stepping on your toes. X on your belly. I think it's a chance to get 
to know people that you can relate with. Like, it's nice to be ha to have people to talk to who understand you and can relate to you. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Dog sledding, well, how can that not be fun? So, and it's going to be challenging because it's not going to be all fun and games, but it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> On fait tout pour les traiter comme des enfants normaux, mais ils n'ont pas un parcours normal. On les sort vraiment beaucoup de leur zone de confort, puis on sort leurs parents de leur zone de confort, puis leurs proches de leur zone de confort. On essaie de convaincre des infirmières, des médecins euh, d'embarquer avec nous dans le recrutement. Let's go! Je pense que ma présence, ça vient aussi sécuriser un peu tout le monde, puis se dire que... Il y a quelqu'un qui est là, qui est en charge, qui est capable de réagir de façon euh, plus globale que ce qu'un secouriste avancé dans la nature euh, peut faire. Du traîneau à chien, c'est pas vraiment quelque chose que je pensais faire dans ma vie, surtout que j'ai peur des chiens. Tu vas à une place, puis tu connais personne, puis tu vas faire quelque chose que tu n'as jamais fait, donc c'est vraiment un sens d'accomplissement, pas, pas nécessairement juste avoir du plaisir. Oui, ça fait partie, mais aussi avoir un sens d'accomplissement après tout ce que tu as vécu. Oh my God! Jesus, man! What did you think of dog sledding? Scary? Fun? Hard? Yeah. Um, but you guys did really, really well. Our next task is to thank our dogs. You're going to find your team. You're going to give them cuddles and thank them for pulling us and all our stuff here. I was with Cameron, and uh, yeah, he's a pretty good driver. I don't know, I might be a bit better, but hey. <laughs> She's really tired right now. She's going to let her be. Our like, dogs took the one that went like this what? into the dirt <laughs> around the tree. And our sled woo! And you really fell. Yeah, I mean, it you guys hurt. would flip over and my, then you fell my and arm then really she hurt. was dragged by the Fought dog. The yeah, yeah, I was like real bad. bad. Did you see Zach? Who was it? Zach and Eric, yeah, I think was, they went over, like right before the creek. They just went right over. Oh, like, oh yeah? Flipped. Yeah. <laughs> I have done my duties for the day. <laughs> In 1995, I, I received a call from a doctor, an oncologist doctor. Uh, his name is Sylvain Baruchel. So he, he told me, Sir Mario, he, he just lost an uh, adolescent uh, from cancer. And he told me, so well, this kid I think gave up too fast, didn't fight enough. He didn't think he had still have strength to fight the, the, the sickness. And he said, I want you to take my adolescent kid at the hospital out in the wilderness. Then the first expedition was 1996, was a dog sled expedition. Uh, I love dog sledding as an experience for, for a therapeutic approach because uh, I saw many of you guys, you know, some are not comfortable with dogs, it's, it's normal, you know, but 
slowly we see people you know getting closer to the dog and petting the dogs and then I think that's uh, it's uh, for me it's part of the healing process like I said a foundation we don't uh, cure people in terms of cancer us we're part of the healing process but we deal more with with the hurt and the soul uh, the adventure is like uh, a way of human expression, so we like to express ourselves, like music, like arts, like uh, religion, whatever. But more, the most important thing for me, adventure, it's uh, allow us to get in uh, intimate contact with nature. But most of all, the adventure allow us to get in intimate contact with ourselves, to know each, to know us. When you're an adult, something you and they announce you have cancer. I think you, a lot of those, what it is an adolescent, uh, it's, it's it's pushed away. You know, because you don't not able to do all the things that you would like to do and everything. And when we go on expedition with the foundation, I think what we do for us, you're not kid with cancer. You are adolescent, and we we like to treat you as adolescent. So we have fun. So it's why I think it's important to have fun, to try things, to take chance, to meet new friends, and just being what you know you guys want to be again. And when you go back home, I think you get all the strength and all the power to do whatever you want in life and just to move on. Keep going, let's go. Good dogs. Yeah, being outside really helps and it like, it really takes you away from everything and like, especially when you take away electronics and all that, it's like, it takes you to a different world. It's not just like, you're not just sharing and talking about your problems, it's like, you get out there, you have fun, and you, you bond, and it kind of just comes out by itself that you start sharing and everything, once you really feel a connection. Hello, hey, Bob! J'ai réalisé un moment, j'étais sur la glace, sur, sur le lac glacé, puis on se lançait des boules de neige, on faisait des bonhommes de neige, puis après ça, qu'on est allé couper des branches, puis là, on se poussait tout dans la neige, puis... Ça fait... Il faisait froid, hein, mais... Comme on s'amusait dans la neige, ça fait des années que j'ai pas fait ça. Si ça fait du bien de sortir dehors. Souvent on voit juste l'hôpital pendant très longtemps. Puis là on vient dehors, puis on change, on fait quelque chose de nouveau avec des gens qui comprennent un peu qu'est-ce qu'on a traversé. Donc on a bâti cette chose, puis on est capable de faire encore plus ensemble. Donc. I think it was amazing how quickly and how much we bonded. And I think the outdoors was a key part of that. You wouldn't be able to, you know, sit people down in a conference room for a week to talk about cancer and they wouldn't feel anything, you know, they just make dumb jokes or whatever and that's it. But we really got a, got a good connection going, I feel. It was way less awkward than anything, you know, way less awkward than I, I'm, I presume talking to a therapist or a psychologist. This is people that really, that really understand what you've gone through, and I've gone through it too, and they have these same experiences, and you feel not as alone, you know? You're on, Emily. It's been difficult, but fun. You good? Yeah. I'm ready to go back to my normal life. I'm ready to go back to school. I'm ready to go back to hanging out with my friends every day.